Imagine this problem. You have a widget that should update the number of enemies remaining as you kill them, and you have a door that should open when all enemies are dead. So all of these objects need to communicate together. The widget, the door, the level, even the enemy and the player. So what is the right way of implementing this? And how do you avoid the most common mistake? The answer is the observer pattern. Welcome everyone to this new series on software design patterns in Unreal Engine. Starting with, in my view, the most important one. If you don't know what a design pattern is, it's simply a template or a description of a solution for a very common software engineering problem. The problem here being, how do I get different objects in my game to communicate and share information with each other in a way that is scalable and easy to maintain? Let's take the example that I just showed you earlier. How do we update the widgets in our UI when an enemy dies? The most common mistake people make here is they say, well, in the death function of my enemy, I'll just get a reference to my widget and change the count. So this is a mistake because what you did now is called coupling the enemy and the widget, or also known as creating a dependency between these two separate objects. Now, this is bad because now there is logic related to the widget inside the enemy class. This means that if later down the line you want to change the widget, you have to change the enemy as well, and vice versa. And if you keep creating these dependencies, then making one simple change down the line means that you probably have to rewrite a huge portion of your game, which can get messy very, very fast. So what is the observer pattern and how does it help us here? Well, the observer pattern, and sometimes referred to as the publisher-subscriber pattern, is based on the idea of having a signal broadcasted or published when an event occurs, such as an enemy dying. And another object somewhere in your game subscribes or listens to this signal that was broadcasted and reacts to it. That way, you can have one object broadcast a signal from somewhere and not care about what happens with it, then multiple other objects or actors in your game can listen or subscribe to this event and react differently to it. So how does this work in Unreal Engine? Well, in Blueprints, it's very simple. It's done through defining event dispatchers. And in C++, it's done through defining a delegate. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to focus on the Blueprint implementation. But the idea itself is the same in C++, just the implementation is slightly different. And I will leave additional C++ resources in the description. So let's jump into our first practical problem. All right, right now, when I kill an enemy, the widget uh, count doesn't update. So let's see what we can do. Well, let's jump right into our enemy Blueprint and see what we have. Uh, well, right now I want the enemy to be a publisher to broadcast the signal that, hey, I died, if anyone's interested, do something. So here in the death event, we just do some ragdoll and uh, disable some collisions and that's it. So what we're going to do is on the left here, we're going to add an event dispatcher and we're going to call it on death. Now, usually event dispatchers, you name them on something uh, because it's a trigger for something that happened. So now that we added an event dispatcher, this will be the published event or the broadcasted signal. So at the very end of the death event here, I'm just going to drag this event dispatcher and say call. Now by doing so, I just published this event after uh, the death uh, functionality has finished. Now you can also pass input to this if you want. In the uh, details panel, when you click on the event dispatcher, you can add inputs uh, to uh, pass information to whoever's subscribing to this event. But in our use case, we don't need any inputs, so I'm gonna leave it like that. And that's all our enemy has to do to become a publisher. All right, so now we need to subscribe to this on death event in our widget and do something with it. So let's open up our content browser and go to our widget. And in the graph here, right now, all I have is as soon as the widget is constructed, we just get the length uh, of all the enemies in our level and set that as the uh, enemy count text. So that's why it starts with three. Um, but it doesn't decrease and this doesn't change because we're only doing this on event construct. Well, now you might be asking, well, can't I do this on tick then and keep checking uh, how many enemies are left or how many enemies died and then update this value? Well, yeah, you can do that, but you'd be checking this around 60 times a second for no reason because it only changes once every few seconds or even every few minutes. 
So this is a waste of resources and bad for performance. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to subscribe to this event. Now to subscribe, we use the bind keyword uh, or bind function from Unreal Engine, uh, but we need to first loop over our array because the bind, you bind to a specific reference of the enemy, meaning that each one of these enemies is broadcasting or publishing a separate on death event. So I need a reference to each one of them and bind to their own on death event. So here I'm going to just pull off of this and say for each. So now I'm looping over all three enemies. And for each enemy, I'm going to search for bind on death. On death is the name of the event that we event dispatcher that we added. And over here, I'm going to pull and make a custom event. And I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, uh, decrease enemy count. All right, so now this in the loop, I'm only binding. But in here, this is what will actually happen when the event is published. So what I want to do is um, get the number of enemies in my array. So let me actually make that into a variable. So I'm going to promote this to a variable. Call it enemies count. And all I'm going to do here is get my enemies count and say decrement. Decrement just means subtract one. And after that, I am going to set the text again to this new value. And that's it. So as soon as the enemy dies, um, uh, an, a signal is broadcasted called on death. And here I'm binding to it on the event construct. And each time it's called, I'm going to decrease one from the number of uh, enemies remaining. So let's test this out. So now enemies remaining is three, and as I kill them, it decreases by one, by one, and by one. Perfect. Now, the most useful thing about this pattern is that you can have multiple uh, actors or objects subscribing to the same event and doing different things. So right now, uh, I want when all of the enemies are dead, this blue door to open. So I'm going to subscribe to the same on death event and then open this door. But what's the right place to do this? Well, I could have multiple doors opening and closing for multiple reasons, so I'm not going to do it in the door blueprint. But in this specific level, this door opens when all enemies are dead. So I'm going to do it in the level blueprint. So to open uh, the blueprint specific for this level, you click on this icon and say open level blueprint. Here in the level, level blueprint, I just um, add the widget. I don't do anything else. Um, so we want to open the door uh, when all enemies are dead. Now to open the door, you simply get a reference to it. So I've, if I click on the door and then go to my uh, blueprint, I can right click and it will already have a reference for my door here, say create reference. This just takes the element that you were focused on uh, in the level. And the door has a function called open and that's how you open the door. Uh, so I'm just gonna create a new custom event here and call it uh, open door. So whenever this is called, uh, the door will open. But now when do we want to call it is when all three enemies are dead. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did in our widget here. So we're going to get all actors uh, of class BP enemy. And we're gonna loop over them. Well, first let's get their length to store how many we start with. Promote that to a variable called enemies count. So now we know that we start with three enemies and now we loop over each enemy and bind to the on death. Uh, there's also a shorthand for bind called assign on death. What it does is it binds and creates the event for you. Uh, so you don't have to bind and then pull and say custom, it's just a shorthand. And here we're gonna name this event uh, check enemy count or something because we wanna check how many are left. Um, all right, so now when an enemy dies, uh, I want to also decrease the enemy's count. So I'm gonna get this and say decrement again, we're decreasing it by one. And now I'm gonna check, uh, is this number equal zero? So are all enemies dead? And I'm gonna do a branch. If all enemies are dead, then let's, uh, I don't know, wait one second. 
and then call open door. All right, now let's test this out. So I'm killing enemies. The widget is updating. As soon as all enemies are dead, waits a second and the door is open. Yay, and we're free to go. Great, now let's quickly recap uh, what we've done. The observer pattern is useful when you want to communicate between objects in your game when an event occurs. It allows you to publish an event from one place and subscribe or listen to it in multiple different places and react differently. We did so by calling the event dispatcher when the enemy dies, thus publishing an event. Then we bind to this event in our widget to update the count of enemies in the UI. This is our first subscriber. And we also bind to this event in our level blueprint to check when all enemies have died to open the door. And this is our second subscriber. So what are the benefits of this approach? Well, now we have decoupled our enemy from our widget, from our level, thus having them all independent actors and making them very easy to update and maintain in the future because they all have their separate concerns and don't know anything about each other. We also ensure that our code is easily extendable, meaning that we can add new publishers without changing the subscriber and vice versa. And most importantly, we make our code easier to maintain and less prone to errors because the publisher and the subscriber are independent from each other. So this reduces the risks of unwanted side effects. Now, in future videos of this series, I'm going to be explaining different design patterns, such as the object pool pattern or the component design pattern. And I'll be explaining when to use them, what are some of use cases and so on. So if you find this useful or interesting, please consider giving a like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.